videos in my YouTube, whatever, check it out. Let me know what you think. Link in the description. Link, link in the, in the what? In the what? In the description. I also wrote a book of short stories, comedy, drama, romance, you name it. Link in the description. I, I wrote my, my, my uh, Instagram and TikTok handles in the description as well. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok. On Instagram, I just post my music. And what I cook occasionally, I have highlights, story highlights, and I post like food on there. But my Instagram feed is just full of my music. My TikTok is full of skits that I do to promote my music. Music is the main thing I do. So check that out. Let me know what you think. If it's trash, let me know that it's trash and I'll try harder. I will try my best to make you happy. But please do check it out. Anyway, today's video. I'm gonna be talking about marriage. Yay, marriage. I love the, the, the concept of marriage. I think it's a beautiful thing. I think relationships, I think love in general is beautiful. But I think these days... Love is, is, is in there in the, yeah, no. The way we do love these days. Trash, 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 trash. People have commitment issues. They don't know how to commit. And their priorities are messed up. And their expectations are messed up. somewhat structured for me marriage is a union between two people if you want to get biblical about it two people come together to become one flesh I think that's beautiful I like the concept of that one flesh which means your wins your wins are my wins my problems your problems your problems mine within reason of course like if you've got an issue with the cashier at the supermarket that has nothing to do with me babes you gotta sort that out unless it's like some deep issue then like you know but yeah, generally speaking, we are invested in each other's well-being. We are invested in each other's lives. We're here to see each other grow. We're here to see each other be better. We're here to support each other. Love each other. And have some babies. Have some babies. Um, but yeah, I think like... That union, man, it's a big thing, it's a big deal. And people need to understand what you're doing when you're getting married. It's a serious thing. People take it so lightly. You're literally saying, till death to us part. Don't just, like, don't do that without understanding what that means. It means, until you die, until you're dead, you cannot just leave this person. People, people just, people are like in six marriages. It's like, no, 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 no. I understand sometimes, you know, someone is just unbearable. I get it. But most of the time, like, all right, come on. Pick better partners, okay? Be patient. Be observant. Excuse the noise. I've been out involved in some stinkers of relationships. Um, I've just been with girls who just, oh, 
you know, not the best fit for me. And I've been in positions where I've allowed myself to be undervalued. I have allowed myself to be undervalued. And at some point you have to realize that, okay, cool. I keep finding myself in these situations, which means I'm attracting them. Which means I need to do better. So, I'm going to work on my confidence. I'm going to work on building myself up so I can offer more, so that I can attract more. If I take care of myself, if I'm healthy, if I have my life together, like, I'm earning well, like, I have a plan, I have trajectory, my head is in the right place, my confidence is in the right place, I'm praying, I'm doing all the things I'm supposed to be doing, then I can attract the right person. If not, you get, you get whatever is there, whatever is there, that's what you get. I'm not trying to get whatever, whatever's there. I'm trying to get something that makes me happy. Let's talk about sex for a second. Um, I just wonder when you say the word sex, does you, you demonetize? Uh, who cares? Um, who cares? Um, I have a hundred subscribers. <laughs> anyway, um, sex. Unpopular opinion. We shouldn't be having as much sex as we're having, like, with random people. This isn't, like, a religious perspective. This is a practical perspective. I read, and it's crazy, the information is out there. It's not controversial. It's not a hearsay. It's not some mythical hullabaloo. Like, if the information's out there. I read a Harvard article by Harvard students. Harvard, um... The scientists, like, they, they study this stuff. They're like biologists. And they'll talk about how during sex, your brain releases chemicals, oxytocin, vasopressin, oxytocin and vasopressin. And these are literally known as...
It wasn't sex sex. I've never had sex sex. But wait, before you judge me, before you, uh, uh, whatever, uh, uh, that, that was genuinely a choice I made. I have been offered sex before and I said no. I didn't want it because I genuinely do want, like, someone I care about. Like, I, I, I want to do that with someone I genuinely, genuinely care about. But there was a girl that, like, she lives in another city, so we couldn't link up. We did send, like, nudes and stuff. I regret doing that because, you know, we're not, we're not right for each other. So I, I regret showing that side of myself to someone that I'm not going to be with. But I did observe, like, mentally, my attitude towards her was, was, was very different than a lot of other girls I've been with because of that exchange the dynamic was very different like that sexual it was a sexual bond that kind of yeah I don't know how to explain it but like it made me realize that sex isn't meaningless there's, there's something to it there's definitely something to it and the more you engage in sexual conduct with multiple people the lower your chances are of successfully bonding with that person you meet one day that you want to settle down with it's just like it's called pair bonding and you can look it up if you want to the concept of pair bonding bonding with a mate basically and when you have this so many different attachments to so many different people you're screwing up your chances man not to say it's impossible like if, if you've been out here doing the most like I, I i do think you should stop but i'm not gonna say like your chances of finding love are finished they're done no i don't think that's true i just think you need to take time to sit by yourself and undo that mess you've caused in here because I've seen it, I've seen girls find a good guy or guys find a good girl and they cannot be satisfied, they cannot sit still and just enjoy that they end up cheating usually with people that have been within the past like how many girls cheat with that toxic ex of theirs that's no good for them they'll have a good guy and they'll cheat on that good guy with the most toxic ex it's because you're attached to that person you can't get over them you still have feelings for them why because you are bonking them you are you are getting ran through or doing the running through and now you're attached to this person stop it stop it Get married, get, and then, that's my opinion. And, and so many studies have been done that show that people that wait until marriage to have sex, that wait until marriage to live together, they generally have a higher chance of staying together and of being happy. It's that truth. It's that truth. I'm not making this up. Sorry, that was a bunch of noise. Um, uh, yeah. And, I, you know, I read a bunch of literature on this. Some, some studies say that, no, you know what? That used to be true back in the day. People that wa wait to, um, uh, have sex within a marriage that way to live together and when they're married like that like, their chances of being happy would be reduced i mean would be higher but that was true back in the day these days that's not so true anymore da 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 because that it's not that no that's not true it's it's still very much true today that if you just wait 
until you're married. If you just wait to have sex until you're married, your chances of happiness increase exponentially. Um, in the inter in, in like the beginning, the first year of marriage, they say your risk of divorce is higher if you're living together for the first time. Like, if you get married and that's the first time you're living together, you didn't live together before then, your risk of divorce is higher within the first year. That is true. But after that first year, what happens typically is things get easier and those people, they stay together. Whereas people that have been living together and having sex and doing all those things, their risk of divorce is lower in the first year, which which these scientists or these people that came out this region, which they took as, see, look, look, having sex before marriage doesn't mean anything. Living together before marriage doesn't mean anything. But they did not track what happens after the first year. And after the first year, what was, what was discovered was that these people still break up. They still get divorced. So, it poses a long-term risk. And the question you might ask is like, like why, like why? Why does something as simple as living together raise the risk so much? And I think that there, there are a bunch of factors. Let me try break it down practically. One of the things that, um, one of the things that I, I read was that when you live together, like girl, as girlfriend and boyfriend, not as husband and wife, but as girlfriend and boyfriend, when you get a place together and you're paying rent and you've signed documents and you're in this place together now, breaking up is no longer an easy thing to do anymore. You are tied to this person, <clears throat> excuse me, as if you're married, but you're not. What this can do now is it, it can create so much pressure for you to stay in a relationship that you might not actually want to be in. Also, you're probably having sex and all these different things. And the issue with sex is... Sex is often a band-aid over a lot of issues in a relationship. When you withhold sex in a relationship, basically you say to the person, we are going to focus on each other. We're not going to have sex until we are certain that we are right for each other. And, that, and, and the only way to be certain about that is if we're married. We've tied the knot. We've said the vows. We've kissed. I do in front of the priest, whatever, 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 however you get married. But oftentimes what we see is couples that aren't married, having tons of sex, having tons of very aggressive fights, toxic fights. And what do they do as soon as they fight? They have sex. Because sex is the easiest way to forget that you have very big issues with someone. It's kind of the best way to sweep things under the rug. So we see that it, it kind of becomes a crutch in the relationship. Whereas, if you withhold sex until marriage, it's easier to discern how you truly feel about someone. Nothing's clouding your judgment. And, um, what else? Let's go back to living together. Oh, there are so many reasons, man. You have to read the article. Maybe I'll link it. I think I'll link it in the description. I'll try find the link. But yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of people living together before they get married. I'm not a fan of people having sex before they get married. And again, it's not really from like it's not really a religious thing. It's just a practical thing. When you look at the statistics of the amount of people that get divorced, of the amount of relationships that fail, of the amount of people that are not happy in their relationships. You start to ask yourself why? And there are answers to those questions. People just don't like the answers. But uh, I'm genuinely trying to be happy. I'm genuinely trying to find a wife. So I'll do. 
I hope you didn't see any burgers in my nose. Anyway, yeah, I want to do what's necessary to, to be happy and, and, and be in love and have a successful relationship, a successful marriage. And my expectations of what that is is in sunshine and rainbows. You're tethering yourself to the person for life. It's a big deal. And it's not always going to be fun. But I think it will always be worth it. It'll always be worth it. If you put in the effort. Like, I always want to be able to take my wife out on dates. People stop trying once they get into a committed relationship. Like, they stop trying. They stop being romantic because you've done it. You've, you've secured the boyfriend or the girlfriend. You're in the relationship now. Why do you need to keep trying? But like, now once you're in the relationship, you should be trying even harder. What do you mean? Like, once I'm married, it's time to become even more romantic. Like, I want to be writing cards. Writing cards. I write poetry a lot, so I want to be able to write poems. I cook. I want to be able to cook for her. I want to be able to take her places. Surprise her with gifts. Do all these things to make her feel special. Because that's important. That's like... That's important. And I'm looking forward to that. I, I will try my best to make her happy. And she will try her best as well. Because I'm not a dickhead. <laughs> you can't give and not get back. Don't, don't get yourself into relationships like that. Leave, run, run. If you're putting in 100% and she's putting in 10, she needs to put in 100 as well. That person needs to put in 100 as well. They have to. Otherwise, like, you're wasting your time. But yeah, I'm looking forward to um, the day I get into a relationship with someone like that I, I genuinely love and that genuinely loves me. And we work our way towards marriage. By the way, this is going to be a long video. I don't think you need to wait that long to get married. For me, a couple months to a year is okay to decide if I'm going to marry someone or not. Oh my god, that's not enough time. That's too quick. It's not. It's not. It really isn't. You can find out everything you need to know about someone in a few conversations. I guarantee you right now. But you need to make sure that your priorities are in check. You know what you want. You need to know what you want. Then, when you find it, it's easy to discern if you found it. It's very easy. I know what I want. I want a good, um, virtuous woman. More on the conservative side. I, I'm not a fan of the, 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 yeah, hypersexual activity of this of, <laughs> of this dating I sound very old but yeah I'm not a fan of it I want someone that's cool and conservative but like can still kick it with me because I'm I consider myself conservative but I am I do make music I do rap I do I do do a lot of things that yeah like I want someone I can have fun with but that um can 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 give me peace basically I don't have to worry about them I don't have to have conversations about certain things because we're on the same page like I know that you would never do that thing that a lot of other girls are doing I know that you would never say this thing that a lot of other people are saying I know that you would never like we're on the same page on a lot of things he, she needs to be willing to have kids I've mentioned this in other videos. I want to have four kids. Minimum. Four minimum. I'll have my first kid and see how I feel. But I want four. So she needs to be done with that. And then yeah like. 
with a bunch of other little things, but once I've, I've figured out that our values are aligned, that we get along really well, that we have fun around each other, she's not too uptight, because it's a fine line, you want someone conservative, but you don't want them to be uptight, like, you can't have fun with them, like, like, I need to be able to have fun, and then, yeah, like, I can introduce you to my mom, like, my mom can get along with you, that's important too, I don't want a girl that my mom doesn't like, it won't work, because my mom is important to me, and I want you to have a relationship with my mom, you know what I'm saying, but yeah, I know what I want, I know, like, and when I find her, I'll know, and in a couple months, I can be sure that this is someone I want to marry one day, I'll check back with it, with you in a couple years and we'll see if I was right or wrong. But yeah, I genuinely believe you don't need that much time, but there's some people that have been dating for 10 years. Like, what are you doing? You're wasting time. Like, five years, six years, seven years, like, you know by now if you want to marry that person or not, you know. Why are you wasting time? Like, Either you get married or you break up. It's that simple. But yeah. Marriage. Beautiful thing. Appreciate anyone that made it all the way through this video. It's very long. But yeah. Let me know your views on marriage. Um, let me know. How long do you think you should wait before you get married? What age would you get married? I'm 22. I'd get married right now. If I meet someone in the next year or so and I, I feel really good about them, I'll get married. I don't care. I'll get married. I, I, I need to get my finances in order as well. Until I, so I need to have my finances in order first and then I'll get married. But yeah. If all things are aligned, I'll get married whenever, right now, or 10 years from now. It depends on how how quickly I'm, I'm able to establish myself financially and all that good stuff. Mentally, confidence-wise, all that stuff. But yeah, I'm not afraid of marriage at all. I think it's a beautiful thing, and I understand the, the responsibility that comes with it, the, the, the gravity of that situation I understand it but I'm not scared of it I, I, I think it's beautiful and I'm, I'm looking forward to it let me know what age you would get married um, if you do want to get married and um, if you want to have kids let me know that as well in the comments stay wavy stay gravy and once again thank you if you've watched this long video.